Tony D and Little Joan with uh, tonight's second video. There's just no movie trailers to speak of. But I did come across this. Someone uh, named Mary posted this page from the X-Men. You're not going to believe what it says. Smash like and subscribe. Thank you for smash liking and subscribing. Check out my books. I guarantee you they're written better than this. Uh, books 1 through 10. The Pineys at Amazon.com. Don't forget, Kindle Unlimited is free. Thanks for coming out, by the way, to Mechanical Brewery in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. It was a great night. We had trivia night, and uh, people did. I played uh, movie trivia. God, it was Christmas movie trivia. Some of the movies, they, they were the answers I had I never even heard of. Uh you know, at one point the hostess is like, "Oh, this is an easy one," and and like stated this movie with Cameron Diaz and Kate Winslet, which I was just like, "That's a chick movie. How is that one easy?" Um, but you know, there was mixed. There was a lot of couples playing this game. I was playing alone, solo, stag, if you will, and uh, but I got all the Christmas story answers correct. Yeah, there were questions about Christmas story. Nailed them. But I did not, I didn't even come close. Um, but the, the highlight of the evening was I got to give the tiebreaker question. Uh, and they said, could you make up a Jersey Devil trivia? And I did. The answer was Kate May. All right. <clears throat> so this got posted by Mary. I think this is a recent X-Men book. And it's completely out of context. And you could say, oh, it's unfair. You're taking it out of context. Read the whole book. Blah, 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 blah. This is a pretty stupid sequence. I'll read it to you. But before I do, um, understand that the characters in it, first off, they're all female superheroes. It's female Wolverine, who I believe is, I think it's supposed to be the daughter of Wolverine, I think, um, who's taken his place, I guess, because every every uh, lady at Marvel has to get rid of all the male characters. Jubilee, who's in a sailor outfit for some reason, and a character called Boom Boom, who I sort of barely, I remember hearing the name long time ago. I, I didn't know she was in the X-Men, but whatever. And the villain is some sort of vampire who has kidnapped them all. Okay, this is a typical typical superhero story you would see. The villain kidnaps the superheroes and puts them on display or whatever. So here here's the, the sequence. Uh, welcome to my aquarium, lovelies. Now, that I'm told that the villain is a vampire. I, I, I don't recognize the villain. Make yourself at home because you're never leaving. Okay? That's a typical villain speech. Now, he's a vampire. And uh, he seems... It seems like he... I, I, it's hard to tell, but I think he's on the phone. Yeah, I think he's on some sort of phone. Communicating inside whatever force field or aquarium they're trapped inside. And it's just... It's the three female superheroes in these hot, hot Skippy costumes, which I assume he sort of provided, I guess. Although female Wolverine seems to be in her superhero costume. Uh, okay, whatever. And in this first panel, it looks like Boom Boom and, uh, what's her name? A Jubilee. I guess they're getting changed. So they're in their underwear in that panel. Because I guess they're putting on these costumes that he's demanding they put on. Now, he's a vampire. I think we all know what vampires do and why they uh, go after women. They're usually seducing them. <laughs> because they're very charming and they have uh, hypnotic powers that are supernatural and women find them hard to resist. Okay. Okay. But now I read to the first panel what he said. Very superhero-y, comic book-y stuff. Here's the second panel. He's talking to a female Wolverine. A female Wolverine says, You like watching people piss, huh? I swear to you, that's what the panel says. He is taken aback by this statement. What? What? Now, first off, right there, you're already, you, you, you've already gone right off, right off the reservation. Now, maybe female Wolverine is that vulgar and, you know, I could see that. Her father's Wolverine. He's he's pretty straightforward, straight shooter. It's weird. Maybe I could forgive that. But vampires, they don't, they don't get flummoxed. 
Vampires live for hundreds of years. They don't get flummoxed anymore. It just doesn't happen to them. They're too old. You like watching people piss, huh? Like, that would not phase a vampire. There's nothing. There's probably nothing you could say to a vampire that would phase them. What could you say? What could you say to a guy? And vampires, it's often implied that they live these debauched lives, right? They drink blood. They drink blood. They have tons of sex. They live these debauched lives. They've done horrible things. They've murdered people. Murder being one of the worst things you could do, right? They murdered lots of people. It's not even a thing to them anymore. So you're telling me he gets, oh my God, she's accusing me of watching them piss. He's murdered people. He's drank their blood. He's felt the, the life drain from them. Oh God, she's accusing me of watching them pee. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever right there, in my view, in my view. And you could say, again, I'm taking it out of context, but that's pretty crazy. But he's, what, what? And she, she just keeps going. You like pee, you're into it. Okay, this is a pretty stupid sequence, but I could kind of maybe see it, maybe. If, if you really, you know, laid the groundwork for this guy being a vampire, but even though he's able to kidnap superheroes and put them in an aquarium, apparently too flummoxed to deal with this. Another thing a vampire would do, he would give him that privacy. Because again, vampires are charming. They charm the ladies. Why wouldn't he give them that space? Anyhow, he says, no, no, that's not true at all. He's still very flummoxed, it sounds to me, from the dialogue. Female Wolverine again. Then why can't we use clothing racks to do our business in private? <laughs> First off, that's a terrible way to frame, to word that. It, the, the, the question should be, then why can't we have a private place to do our business? That would be the question. And maybe you'd ask that before you'd accuse him of liking pee. Because see, if you just said, hey, maybe the first time you had to pee, you'd say, hey, wait a minute. I don't want to pee here. There's no, uh, there's no walls. I'll wait till he comes in and I'll say, hey, uh, there's no, there's no uh, privacy here. Like that would be something to do. Doesn't make any sense to do it in this order. He says, it's a security concern. And they interrupt, uh, he, uh, female Wolverine interrupts the vampire. It's an excuse for a poorly disguised fetish. Now, maybe in the other panels, he's, they catch him looking like, ah, I don't think so. Now, the character, I think, I think this is Boom Boom. Oh, a little piss boy. Like, immediately chimes in. She's not... I guess she's standing kind of close enough to overhear this, but it seems like, and now she's already dressed completely. In the previous panel, she doesn't appear to be dressed. She appears to be in other, other clothes, completely other clothes. In fact, I think looking at the back, if that's those, they're, those two in the background in the first panel, it appears like, Boom Boom is now wearing the leggings of that Jubilee were wearing, and Jubilee is now wearing the skirt Boom Boom was wearing. I don't I don't know what's going on there. Either that or it's just some other women in the background. But she immediately chimes in, all oh, little piss boy. That sounds like the writer speaking for both Wolverine and Boom Boom. That sounds like they're talking in the same voice. You can imagine one character being vulgar, one female character being vulgar, maybe another one like saying something different. No, it's the same exact thought process, it sounds to me. Oh, little piss boy. Then Jubilee, who I've never seen talk this way in old X-Men comics, piss baby, pee pee boy, like that's some sort of thing we should all connect with. Little baby loves pee says Boom Boom. They're lecturing him. Ladies, lecturing is not a good look in comics under any circumstances, but this is particularly disturbing. 
it sounds like all three of your female superhero characters are speaking with the same voice about the same subject. P. From a and they're accusing a vampire. Uh, my understanding is a vampire anyway. He's not alive. He doesn't care about pee. He cares about blood. Uh, that's my understanding. Now maybe that maybe it's a different kind of vampire. Maybe it's more like a Morbius vampire. He's alive, but he, he drinks blood, or, or, or he's got vampire-like powers. I don't know. I was told he was a vampire reading the comments in here, but I'm not going to buy this comic. What are you, out of your mind? Uh, with dialogue like this, they're talking about a pee fetish. What the hell is that? Like, you, you, and this is a comic book. This is a comic book meant for children? Who is this for? Is it for children? Why are you talking about this? Why are you talking about this in a context that, well, children understand what pee fetishes are, obviously. No, they do not. Nor should they. So, if this is not for children, then the next question is, who is it for? There are a lot of adults that would be like, pee fetish? What the hell's that? <laughs> that sounds gross. This is a superhero comic. They're supposed to be fighting this guy. They're supposed to be defeating him. How is this a strategy to defeat him? To lecture him? He's a vampire. Vampires are normally hundreds of years old. This wouldn't bother him in the least. Not in the least. Oh, you got a fetish. No, he's a vampire. I'm sure vampires could have a fetish, but they're not motivated by sexuality anymore. They, the Sex for them is a completely empty experience. The only thing that's not an empty experience is draining the life out of some living creature. That's about it. And maybe toying with their emotions. He's not toying with them. They're toying with him. And that doesn't make any sense. At least if he's a vampire. Now, someone in the comments section posted another panel for this in which Boom Boom says, or the vampire says to her, you dumped me to Boom Boom. So I guess they were dating. And she responds, but you cheated on me. So now we're to believe that these two had some sort of relationship, some kind of dating relationship, and she would just talk to him like that. That's not the way you talk to somebody who you were in a dating relationship with. Because she could more easily appeal to him from, you know, the days when they were dating. She would probably say the appropriate dialogue for Boom Boom would be something completely different. Like, if she knew, for instance, he did have a fetish and that it would embarrass him, um, then she would say something like, I know what your fetishes are. We dated. I don't think she does. I think this is just... I don't know what this is. <laughs> I, other than humiliation, uh, you know, of the characters and the writer who thinks they're doing something clever, I guess. But again, I mean, all three characters sound... Like, they're talking with the same voice. They came up with this bit. They thought it would be funny. I don't know who thinks it's funny. It's just weird. It's just like, what? You, in order for this to be funny, the character that they would accuse would have to be in a position where being accused of something like this would, it would embarrass them. It would just humiliate them. Like, if this guy was some sort of, I don't know, king... Like, if they had done this to Dr. Doom, I'd imagine he'd be pretty embarrassed. And he'd be infuriated, in fact. He's a, you know, haughty monarch of great power to be accused of something like this. He'd, he'd be pretty upset. But you're talking to a vampire. And once more, apparently a vampire who dated one of the characters. That's not the way you talk to somebody you used to date, whether you're mad at them or not. You're, you know too much about them. So the dialogue should be something different. Now, if, if she knows this is a tactic, she would also know it wouldn't work. <laughs> if this is a tactic to embarrass him, she would already know, having dated him, whether or not this would work. If this does work, 
well then we'd have to know something about his character to begin with like he doesn't like to be accused of uh, anything unusual except he's already kidnapped a bunch of women and put them in an aquarium so he's already an oddball he's already a vampire who's lived how many i don't know lifetimes he's probably not embarrassed by anything He's probably a depraved. He's probably more depraved than anybody at Marvel Comics currently working there, and that—that's a high bar. So, the more I don't know, sensible thing would be that maybe Wolverine and Jubilee got this idea in their head, and not being all that smart, decided to try to humiliate the vampire, and then. Maybe Boom Boom chimes in with something like, come on, and calls him by his first name. Come on. I don't know what his first name is. Frank. Hey, Frank. I mean, seriously, can you not give us a couple of cubicle walls? You know, something. <laughs> and the female Wolverine says, why can't we use the clothing racks to do our business in private? Why don't you just move them yourself? Like, did he not give you permission to move them? <laughs> Could you not hold up the clothing around your fellow women as they did their business until they were finished so no one could see them? Because that would be a solution. There seems to be enough women in there. Yeah, there are at least five women in the first panel. Four of them could hold up a dress or sheet right you could hold each of you could hold up a sheet like this in a square while one of the women were, was in the center going to the bathroom getting changed instead you decided that the smart thing to do would be to pee and poop in front of him uh, allegedly i don't know are there cameras and then accuse him of having a fetish it doesn't make any sense on its surface and this is the level of writing at Marvel Comics. If I was the editor here, I'd be like, what the F is this? What the F are you writing? Who is this for? Who is going to laugh at this? It sounds like somebody who's been on the internet too effing long. That's what it sounds like to me. I mean, I've seen some stuff on the internet, but to casually mention, have multiple characters casually mention a piss fetish and keep talking about it panel after panel that is bizarre in a superhero comic where that kind of stuff in i can safely say in the hundreds and hundreds of comic books i've read and purchased over my many years i have never ever seen a conversation like this never never once do i recall and i've read some fairly dirty comics you know, some alternate comics. I, I read that strange fairy comic that was totally X-rated. Yeah, it was in the store. I was flipping through it. All the women were buying that one. Like, what is wrong with the writer that they thought, wow, oh, this will be funny. Pish fetish. <laughs> what is wrong with the editor to go, What? why is this in your script? Why didn't the editor stop this and say, this isn't funny. This isn't funny. It makes no sense. I mean, there's simple logic to be applied here. These women could have easily, easily hid the toilet. It's really a non-issue in a superhero comic. It really is. I mean, never once in the old days did, you know, characters who were trapped say, oh, you know, we, we don't have good bathroom facilities here. That wasn't an issue because... If you made that an issue, you spend an entire page on a comic book that these days is about 21, 22 pages tops. Back then, at least, they were a little longer than that. That eats up a page. A page you can't afford to eat up because there usually was a lot of action, not a lot of blah, 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 ladies. So this doesn't belong here. This should have been knocked right out while the characters come up with a plan to escape the aquarium. 
That's usually what a comic would be. Oh, I've trapped you in the aquarium, X-Men. You'll never get out. Oh, we've got to do something. If we don't get out of here, he'll, you know, keep us here forever. Ah, I have a plan. Oh, what's your crazy plan? Well, if we do this, this, and this, we can uh, somehow escape. And then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll initiate it during the big show, and then they would do it. Some would go wrong. But then they would initiate most of the plan, maybe change things on the fly, and then see an opportunity and run for, I don't know, the escape hatch or the ship, or I don't know where they are, some sort of strange aquarium with costumes. I, I don't know. I don't know why you'd call it an aquarium. Aquariums are for fish. I think what you mean is a terrarium, which tends to be drier, maybe, or a cage, a exhibit. Aquariums are for fish. It has the word aqua in it, you morons. <laughs> um, what else is wrong with this? Well, I, the artwork's not very good. I mean, that first panel, again, the two characters in the first panel in the background appear to be Boom Boom and Jubilee. Jubilee is wearing uh, pink leggings with stripes, and Boom Boom is wearing a blue skirt. And then in the third panel, when they show up again, Boom Boom has the pink leggings on in a completely different dress. And uh, it looks like Jubilee has the blue skirt on and a different top, and they're no longer in their underwear. Were they changing clothes for some reason? Doesn't make any sense. And why aren't they using their powers to get out of here? Now, they, that's probably established in uh, earlier, I don't know, some superpower dampening thing uh, that allows them to be trapped. Um, that's usually the case, case in, in these comics. Um, I, it, it doesn't make any sense. So, checking in with Marvel Comics, ladies of Marvel Comics, you've done it again. I think you've set a new low bar for, for yourself. Jesus, this would be embarrassing if it was a fanfic. And I hate fanfic. Oh, I've done many a video on how much I hate fanfic and think it's, like, worse than cancer. Uh, this is worse than fanfic. Oh, by far. You have no excuses for this. You had people approve this. You had a, someone, I was going to say a guy, but it was probably not a guy. You had someone write this, and then someone approved this. Now, if they did this in Marvel way, they did a plot, no dialogue. Then they sent the, uh, then they did the artwork, sent the artwork back to the writer to write the story. That is when an editor should have stepped in and said, what the F are you doing? Everybody sounds the same. And why are you talking about P? <laughs> Makes no sense. Anyhow, that's my rant. Um, I suggest, again, once again, that you fire everyone at Marvel Comics. Um, you can hire me. I'd be happy to hire everyone at Comicsgate to take over Marvel Comics and publish actual comics that people would want to read. I would hire very base talent. Um, now, I, I don't know about the artist. This art isn't great. It's it's not the worst I've ever seen. It's not great. I mean, for Marvel Comics, I would I would want something a little more top tier than this. From panel to panel, it's, eh, it's, it's not great. The coloring's okay. Uh, but this dialogue, this this writer has to go, in my view. And your editors, absolutely. That is really what you need at Marvel Comics. You need good editors and good writers. Um, and that's what, back in the day, when they had a continuity, when they had actual stories, that's, that's top-notch to me. When you have top-notch talent in that area, the artwork, that falls into place because everybody would want to work for Marvel at that point. Who the hell would want to work on this? I couldn't, uh, if I was an artist at Marvel and I saw this dialogue on the pages I drew, oh my God. 
I think I'd vomit. I think I'd vomit in rage. I think I'd call up the office and say, please, don't put my name on any of these comics anymore. I think I'd have a, a you know, a gnome de plume rather than have my name associated with this. This is awful. This is just, this is just mind-bendingly, what the F, man? Marvel. Just my opinion, but you really need to clean house. I think if Disney cleans house, they'll just get rid of the entire comics division when they're finally sick of, you know, throwing good money after bad. Not that they can't afford this. They're worth millions of billions of dollars. But, um, yeah, I would, uh, I would completely gut the comic division. I would fire everybody associated with it, just about. Maybe I'd keep some of the freelancers art-wise. No one who ever came up with any of this dialogue or story. I would hire base-based writers and artists and uh, uh, editors. I would make a real super... I would, I would hit the reset button hard. I mean, I would hit it hard. I would start everything over. I would redo some classic X-Men just to reestablish all the characters. And then I'd say, do classic. Everything's classic. Be the original X-Men lineup. Um, original everything. Original everything. And start it, start at scratch. T tell everybody this is a universe. Call it whatever universe you want, and then throw it in the dumpster. And uh, go back, go back to uh, a good old fashioned fighting. You know, fighting bad guys. I'd put a moratorium or bringing back any bad guys. I'd I'd say create new characters. They're in desperate need, desperate need. Both the comic book companies uh, of new characters very new characters and i don't mean replacing the the heroes i mean villains it should be new villains every issue it should be self-contained issues self-contained that would be key and uh i would i would look to revamp how they were marketed and and uh presented i would probably go with again a hundred pages for five dollars five stories put all the x-men books together Five stories, a hundred pages, or more, for five bucks, four ninety nine. And I would put that out once a month, all together, and I do that for every book: House of Spider Man, House of X, House of This, House of That. Uh, maybe twelve books all together. Cut it down to like twelve. Cut it back to twelve. Maybe less. Maybe eight. And just do, you know, a book. A week or maybe two two books a week let's say thick books five dollars a piece a lot real lot for your money maybe four new news stories and then a classic story that way you could save money but maybe uh, burn through some inventory stories if you have any left worth a damn I can't imagine the inventory stories that must be sitting around in Marvel Comics Jesus Christmas it is a S show. I was talking to somebody about comics tonight at the signing, and I just said, you cannot imagine. You cannot imagine this page. I was talking about this page. I said, you can't imagine what was in the damn page. He couldn't believe it. He couldn't believe it. Um, or you could just keep going down this path, Marvel. I, again, I think Disney will close you down. Just close you up. Hand these off. Hand the IPs off to anybody else willing to pay the money. And uh, just manage the licensing. You know, until they can build it back up again or until there's zero interest and then they have to relaunch the comic book division somewhere, you know, 20, 40, 50 years down the road. But at this point, you, you've you basically killed it, ladies of Marvel. I think you've more than killed the Marvel D universe at this point. I don't think these comics do anything for anybody anymore. You know, you've driven the fans away. And they're looking for something new. So, you know, I'd be happy to take your money and fix the problem. But I have no delusions there. There's no way, I think, that Disney will even care to revamp this stuff. I think they're just going to run this money train as long as they can. And, uh, and then just call it quits and then move on to something else. Assuming they are even in business in 10 years. I mean, at the rate they're going. I do not like the looks of them. No. All right. Sorry to rant so long, but that's it for me. Tony D. 
and Little Joan. Check us out on Odyssey, BitChute, and Rumble for our more base takes. If you can get a more base take than that, <laughs> ask for your money back. Um, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you 